right, so the next model we're going to look at is an exponential growth model, right? We've already seen that any time you have a quantity uh, that changes in proportion to its current value, you're looking at exponential growth or decay. Um, we sort of know how to solve that system, we, or how to solve that differential equation. So we kind of know how to write down the solution already. Uh, the point of this problem is essentially to get the details of the particular values and see how that affects the outcome, right? Um, so we know that our differential equation looks like this. We know that it looks like dp dt is equal to k times p, right, for some value k. Trouble is we don't actually know what k is. We also know what the solution looks like, right? We can treat this as a separable equation, or, or linear if you want, but separable is probably going to be easier. Um, we also know that the solution to this equation is p of t is equal to an initial population, p naught, times e to the kt. And in fact, we know what the initial population is that's given to us, right? 200. So it's 200 e to the k times t. All right. So now, the next job we have is figure out what that value of k is, right? And we can do it from the information we're given. What they're telling us here, they're telling us that this initial population of 200 uh, grows to a population of 1,600 in three hours. So in three hours, it quadruples, okay? That's going to tell us the value of k. How? Well, we know this. We are given the following. P of 3, so t measured in hours. On the one hand, it's 1,600. Okay? Oh, and I said quadruples. It grows by a factor of 8. Huh. Work on my math. So we get e to the k times 3. Okay? We can put that information in. So that means that e to the 3k is 1,600 over 200 is, is 8. Okay, take the log of both sides, 3k is equal to the natural log of 8, so that means that k is one-third times the natural log of 8. Okay, good. So we put that in. That gives me p of t is equal to... 200 times e to the natural log of 8 times t over 3. All right. Um, you'll notice I left the exact value here. Right. Um, a lot of people, when they solve these problems, they're really tempted to put that into the calculator because you're, maybe you're not really sure what, like, how much is the natural log of 8? I'm not sure. Divide by 3, what number is that? I don't know. Uh, I mean, we, we could work it out. Um, this is kind of around 2-ish, I think, right? Um, if you square 2.7, somewhere around there. Okay. But uh, one of the reasons why you maybe don't want to solve for that value of k as a decimal is that any decimal you write down is going to involve rounding. Um, if you're doing a problem like this where there are multiple steps that you might be doing, right, we're going to calculate the time to reach 10,000, but there might be other things that you want to figure out as well. Um, if there are multiple steps in a problem like this and you convert to a decimal at every step, you're introducing rounding errors at every step, and those rounding errors might eventually compound. Um, and you might be off by more than you realize because, you know, you rounded it two decimal places and maybe to get the accuracy you wanted, you needed to keep six or seven all the way through. Just leave it as the exact value, right? When you get to the end, final answer, sure, get the decimal because you're going to want to compare with things, right? But leave it like that for now. That answers the first part of the problem. Population is a function of t. How about time to reach 10,000? Um, well, let's see. When does p of t equal 10,000? Well, we'd have 10,000 
equal to 200 times e to the log of 8 times t over 3. So divide both sides by 200. That's going to give me 50, right? So e to the log of 8 t over 3 equals 50. We take log of both sides. Um, log of 8 t over 3 is equal to the natural log of 50. Okay. So now we have our, we have our answer, right? Um, t is equal to 3 times the natural log of 50 divided by the natural log of 8. And that's the quantity that you want to put into your calculator. Um, forget the exact value. The textbook is the value. It's like about 5.6 or something, right? Measured in hours. I um, think that's right. So somewhere around five and a half hours, you, you hit 10,000. Um, you can punch that number into your calculator, right? Uh, easier to leave it exact until you get to the end. Bring the calculator in as your last resort when you're trying to get that final answer because, yeah, um, if you want to give a value for time in hours, that's not so useful. This is where you want your decimal.